Welcome to module 6.1. In this module, we'll create primary beams. A primary beam is a horizontal beam connecting columns or walls. In the United States, this is also known as a girder, which is considered as a main beam. A secondary beam connects two primary beams, and a tertiary beam connects between two secondary beams. Revit would automatically assign the structural usage to a beam when it is placed. On the diagram shown below, the primary beam is shown with the blue leader, the secondary beam is shown with the green leader, and the tertiary beam is shown with the red leader. Go ahead and open up Project A. This lesson continues from Module 6.0. In this lesson, we're going to place out some primary framing along the second floor plan. Before we do this, we need to copy up some structure from the ground floor up to first floor and second floor. So let's begin by rotating the structure. And you can see here in the core area that here we have a structural column and we have two block work walls. We need to select these structural elements. So let's hold our control key down and we'll select the block work wall, the concrete column and this block work wall here. On the context ribbon, we'll select copy to clipboard. And then in the paste pull down menu, we'll select paste aligned to selected levels. Here, we're going to paste this block work wall and the column to the first floor and the second floor. If we click OK, you can now see that we have those same structural members going up through our core. OK, let's now take a look at the O2 second floor plan. In the project browser, double click on 02 second. You'll notice in this view, we're displaying grid seven and grid eight. Now from the second floor onwards, the structure is cut back. So grid seven and eight don't need to feature in any of those structural planes going up. So what we're going to do now is stop grid seven and eight from displaying in any subsequent floor planes that we create. Let's begin by opening up the south elevation. And in the south elevation, you'll see here that grid seven is cutting through the third and the second floor. Well, simply here, we can unlock the alignment of grid seven and then use the grip here and drag this so it's positioned below the second floor. If we now switch back to the zero to second floor structural plane, you'll now notice that grid seven doesn't feature on this plane. In order to do the same thing for grid eight, we'll first need to elevate grid eight and make sure that we've cut a section perpendicular to the grid. To do this, we'll select the view ribbon and on the view ribbon, we'll select section. It doesn't really matter where we begin the section, so I'm going to start it about here. And the critical thing here is we must create this section to be perpendicular to the grid. We can then open up the section. And here again, I'll select grid eight and I'll use the 3D grip control here to make sure that the level stops after the first floor. Once again, I can close down the section two. And here you'll now notice that grid eight again doesn't feature in the zero two floor plan. Now, of course, if I go ahead and open up the third floor plan, again, you can see here that grid seven and eight do not feature in this plan. And that will be the case for all the floors above the first floor. Okay, so let's go back to the second floor plan. And of course here we can delete our temporary section. And then we can adjust the two dimensional length of these grids. Now here, of course, if I change this length here, all the grids will change. But something I can do here is switch this grid from 3D extents to 2D extents. And if I do that, I can then adjust these grids purely for this particular structural plan. You'll then see that the 3D grid position is displayed here. And of course, this is the 2D grid position. I'll continue that for the rest of the grids. We get the same alignment controls as you can see. And again, we can cut these back. Okay, last one to do. There we are, you can now see our plan is prepared for the second floor framing. Before we do this, we're going to need to think quite carefully about the level that this structural framing sits on. If we switch to the south elevation, you'll notice here that when we set up our initial levels, these were set up to be the structural slab level. 
So if I inspect the second floor level here, that is in fact at the structural slab level. I'm about to place steel framing that needs to sit underneath this slab. So what we're going to do here is create a reference plane that's constrained to the soffit of the slab and all of our structural framing will be hosted onto that reference plane. To create a reference plane on the structure ribbon on the far right hand side, you'll see here we have ref plane or we can type in RP, which is the shortcut key. A reference plane by its very nature is a planar element. So if I create a reference plane along here, this plane will be infinite in its size. So now that I've sketched that reference plane in, on the context ribbon, I'm going to go ahead and select the Align tool. Here, I'm going to pick the underside of my slab, and then I'm going to pick the reference plane, and then constrain this in position. To release the Align command, I'll select the Modifier button just in here. And of course now, just to demonstrate this, if I select the second floor plane, and I change the level from 7.2 to perhaps 7 meters, you'll now notice that the reference plane will then move in relation to the level. Okay, let's return that to 7.2 meters. Before we can actually use this to host structural framing, the reference plane must be named. So I'll select the reference plane, and you can see here in Canvas, I can change the name of the reference plane, or of course, I can go into my properties palette and add a name here. So in here, I'm going to type in 02-TOS. So that's going to represent top of steel. Okay, so now we can switch back to our 02 second floor plane and we can now start to create our framing. On the structure ribbon, we'll select beam. On the context ribbon, you'll note here that we can draw many different shapes for our beams. But in this example here, we're going to place out all of our primary beams using the on grids method. This will automate the placement of our primary members based on grid positions. You'll notice here that we're going to tag these beams on placement. And also notice on the options bar, a really important step here is to change our placement plane from 0 to second floor to reference plane 0 to top of steel. This will ensure that our framing is placed at that level and constrained to the reference plane. The structural usage will be set to automatic, so as we discussed earlier, Revit will then detect that these are primary, secondary or tertiary elements. In this case, we're going to leave this set to automatic. And if we go ahead and look in the properties palette in the type selector, we're going to ensure here that we're using a universal beam. And here it's going to be a UB4571267. So we're now ready to place out our primary beams. To do this, on the context ribbon, we'll select on grids, and I'm going to use a crossing window here to select all of those grids. Now, of course, Revit will then preview all of those beams. Notice here it's trying to actually put primary beams around these grid areas over here. I don't want that, so I can hold down my shift key and I can then remove certain grids that I don't want these beams to be placed down. Now inevitably, you are going to get beams where you don't want them. You can see I've got some framing in here in my core area, and I've also got framing in the reception area of my structure. It's quicker just to place out our primary beams like this, and then remove the ones we don't want. So on the context ribbon here, I'm going to select the finish tick to finish our placement of primary beams. We can then go to our modify button on the context ribbon to exit the beam command, and then I can just simply pick the beams that I want to remove. And of course, we must remember to remove the ones inside the core area as well. OK, and there we are. We now have all of our beams removed from those core areas. And of course, all of our primary beams and framing added in. To review this in the 3D view, we'll go ahead and open up the 3D view. And if I now orbit around the view, we can see all of our primary members nicely placed out. OK, so that concludes this video for module 6.1. Ensure that you save your model ready for the next module.